to the hospital. I went down to the library and I would gotten a couple of books that I had looked up online and they had available. And one of them was about um, cancer diets. And I completely changed the way I ate. I didn't um, eat sugar and like I had to have specialized bread and, you know, there was only certain types of meats that I would eat. And there were certain vegetables that I just ate tons of and, you know, lots of water. Just I completely flushed out my system and just completely changed my diet. I moved my appointment and I was like, you know. I'll go then, but I just want to kind of get myself in a healthier state first. Cause I figured if I was going to be taking chemo and all, um, it was, it, it would take a lot out of me. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and get myself prepared. So I did that. I cut my hair and I kind of shortened my hair and I was wearing braids instead because I used to do my own braids back then. So I cut down my hair and I was wearing braids and I was like, okay, you know, I'm ready. I'm, I'm doing this diet, getting myself together. I would try to force myself to get up. I had an elliptical machine at the time and I would try to force myself to get on this elliptical and go for a little bit. And then I'd have to get help to get back to the bed. But I was trying to really just get myself in a better place health wise before I started cancer treatment because I knew that it was going to take it out of me and I was already weak and kind of falling apart and I didn't want it to be one of those situations where you know we're first chemo treatment and I'm out of here so I was like I gotta get stronger so I can do this crazy thing I go to my very first appointment they run some more tests there because they've never seen me. They have not tested me. So, you know, you got to go and you do all the preliminary stuff and you go and I went and talked to somebody and they go and they run these tests and things. Test comes back. I don't have cancer anymore. So they're thinking that the first doctor didn't run the test correctly. So they get the information from him. They look at all the test results. They check everything. His test was correct. I had cancer. I don't have it anymore. So I was like, what do I do now? Do, am I supposed, should I still take treatment? Should I have mastectomies? Like, what should I do? You know, they told me to keep up with my next couple of appointments. I went in a few more times. Nothing ever came back. And I'm like, glory to God. And we go on because this one. He had to fight for me because I just, I didn't feel like I had to fight in me. There was no way I was going to get through that. I just, I just didn't feel it. And sure enough, I've not had another issue from that day to this one. And I was 26, maybe 25, 26 at the time. And it wasn't shocking for me. My mother was diagnosed with cancer. I have a cousin who was diagnosed with cancer. I had two uncles who passed away um, from cancer, like on my mom's side of the family, cancer is all over the place. And so it's, and it's not just a specific, it, it's breast cancer, uterine cancer, lung cancer. Like it's, it runs rampant on that side of the family. So it wasn't like a shock to hear, oh, you have breast cancer. The shock was when I went back and they were like, we can't find it. It's gone. And it's like, okay. And from that point, I was like, you know what? I've got to do better at taking care of me and getting myself in a position where I'm happy. And I ended up leaving home with my children and moving to another state um, because I was still in New York at the time. And I ended up moving to Ohio. Um, And there were a lot of other things that happened in between that caused that move. But that's a conversation for another podcast. Um, But I did end up leaving Uh, Me and my husband were no longer together and I left and I went to another state and, you know, I had a couple of battles here and there, but I did really, really well. And, oh, and another side note, I had been on steroids for like years and my weight was fluctuating higher than low and then higher because between steroids and me being sick and not wanting to eat, it was a mess. So when I moved, I was still on steroids. Um, I also have to take epinephrine because I have an, um, an allergy to bees and wasps. Um, but 
I had gotten to where it wasn't so bad. You know, I had pains here, pains there, but it seemed like everything just kind of died down. And then I went through this moment in time where it seems like everything came rushing back. And at the time I worked at a hospital, it's front desk and radiology and my ankles were swelling and I couldn't stand up properly. And I had to constantly have my feet propped up. And then I was in pain. My blood pressure was shooting to the roof. And it's like everything just happened. I had to go and have um, two lumps removed from my left armpit. And then I started hemorrhaging and I had like the menstrual cycle that would never end. And I mean, I bled daily for over a month and they couldn't figure out. They couldn't find a point where it was coming from. They couldn't figure out how to stop it. And I had to have um, a uterine ablation in order to stop the bleeding. And it seemed like everything came back with a vengeance and by the time it was over and done with I was on 14 different medications there were two inhalers in there there was a pill I had to take every Wednesday they told me my vitamin d was in the toilet it was like a three um it just seemed like anything that could have possibly gone wrong went wrong I started having issues with my vision um I started having problems with my bones hurting and I started having issues with the headaches and I was dizzy all the time. Like it was a complete mess. I was having x-rays and I had doctor's appointments, top of doctor's appointments, half time couldn't remember where I was supposed to be and when. And then I snapped out and ended up in therapy. It, it was just a lot, a lot, a lot happening all at one shot. And I had doctors from all over the place trying to figure out what is going on and I had one doctor who had a set of diagnoses and he thought those were correct. And then they sent me to see this other woman and she had a set of diagnoses and she thought she was correct. And then they thought that my previous doctors were completely wrong. Then they thought my previous doctors were all the way right. Nobody knew. And I'm not the only member of my family who has this issue. Um, but nobody could seem to figure out what it was. It was like, well, does she have this or what the, well, does she have that? Then they started bringing up diseases I had never heard of before. And it was just this constant back to back. Well, what is it? Well, it could be. Well, maybe it's not. And we went through this for a good two years plus of just a constant back to back. The issue started well before then. Um, I would have problems here and there off and on, problems with my legs, things like that. I was back on steroids, had been on steroids for about five or six years. And, but when it all just dropped all at once and really hit the fan. Um, I slowly started seeing doctors. At first I was like, this is going to be a problem. It's the reason why I don't like to go to the doctor to this day. I'm like, they're not going to be able to figure out anything. I'm going to go to the ER. They're going to tell me nothing is wrong. And it wasn't until the hemorrhaging situation came about that I was like, okay, I need to find out what's happening because now I'm bleeding and that's not cool. So I'm, I'm going, I'm seeing this doctor. My best friend is taking me to this appointment and we're going to this appointment and we're sitting there. She's filling out paperwork for me and I'm just like, I'm so over this. And the steroids are flowing like somebody was popping bottles at a club, child. Like it was just a lot. And they still couldn't figure it out. Could not figure it out. And I'm on, um, I think it was methotrexate. Yeah, I was taking that for a while. And then, you know, there was pills for my blood pressure and there was, at one point I was even on birth control and I was like, what is this for? Like I was on a ton of meds and one day I looked at all these pill bottles and all the, remember to take this only on Wednesday. Remember to take this, but only take it in the morning. You have to take this, but you can only take it before you go to bed because it does this to your stomach. And, and I was like, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. So I took my inhalers and I put them in my purse and I took the nasal spray they had me on. Don't even remember why I was taking a nasal spray and I got rid of it. I dumped out all of these pills and flushed them and I refused to go back and see any of my doctors except for the one that worked in the office across the street from where I worked at. And he was testing my knees and I mean he would bend my knees and it would sound like somebody threw some cornflakes on the floor and decided to river dance all over the back. Just the, the crunch and the awful. 
then they said I was going to have to have um, knee replacements, which I knew because I was told at 18 that I needed knee replacements then. But my mother was like, no, because if she starts having them now, you'll never stop. And I mean, it had gotten so bad that right before I went through this hump of all the illnesses coming back, I was walking with a cane. I couldn't go anywhere without having my cane because my legs had gotten so bad. Um, and he was trying to run tests and do things. So I was like, I don't want several doctors. I want one doctor that can figure it out. And no one ever figured it out. And he was like, it's like, seriously, a medical mystery. We have no idea. And back then I used to take cabs to work like daily. Um, so I got to know just about every cab driver in the city of Akron and I would have drivers to, you know, if I was sick when I got in the car, it's like, what's been going on with you? And I'd tell them, you should tell them to check you for this. Like, it had gotten to the point where the cab drivers are starting to make more sense than the doctors. And I'm like, you know what? That does sound right. <laughs> it, it was just, what is happening here? And then we moved. We left Ohio. And so we came to North Carolina and I took my daughters to go see their doctor. And I was talking to the doctor about problems that my daughters were having and specifically about my youngest because my oldest at that time she was over 18 so you know you don't go into appointments with them anymore um so I was there with my youngest and I'm talking to this doctor and I'm like what is happening and I don't want this to happen to them the way it happened to me and the woman looks at me and she didn't say multiple autoimmune syndrome she actually gave it a name I just can't think of it right now um because I've called it MAS for so long that that's the first thing that comes to my mind. But I will at some point get the name she initially called it and I'll put it on my Facebook page. But she looks at me and she looks at my child and she was like, tell them to send all of your medical records here. She said, but from looking at you, the way you stand, what's happening with her and she's going in what you've described. She was like, you have this. And she just went right back to taking care of my daughter. And I'm like, how she figure that out? And then my the next thing was, she's just like other doctors. She's throwing things out there in the hopes that it'll fit or I'll shut up. And then all of our medical records came in and she got to doing more testing and more checking. And she was like, no, this is really what you have. She was like, the problem is, is there's no specialist in this area that treats it. So I was trying to figure out what exactly am I supposed to do then if there's nobody in this area that treats this condition like what do I do now and I decided for myself that you know what let's try to find some vitamins let's start juicing let's let's do some natural things to see what we can do because she wanted me to come back in and get on a regimen of pills and just the idea of being back on medication, I was like, now nah, I'm going to figure this one out for myself. I'll call you if I mess it up. But I just couldn't see myself being back on a boatload of medication. Like, I didn't want to do that again. So, I'm trying some new things now to see if they'll work. Since I've been here, I've only had one, one, maybe two um, moments where things kind of got a little bad. And, you know, at one point I couldn't walk. Um, And it was because the lower part of my back had completely locked in on me and I had to have assistance going up and down the steps because at the time I lived in a house where there were a lot of stairs. Um, So I had that going on, but that kind of healed up. Um, Now, the second run-in I had, um, it was pretty much along the same lines where my muscles and my legs were giving out Uh, the the first time it was my lower back locked up but the second time it was solely in my legs Um, 
Now, I also had an issue with, uh, um, it was trigger finger. 